We're now joined by Mr. Richard Camareri, the Director of Special Projects for New Community Corporation. Richard and I will talk a little bit about New Community uh, Corporation as a, as a whole, as an organization, and talk about an upcoming gala. So Richard, welcome. Thank you, Rodney. Good great, to be back. Great. Thank you. So Richard, why don't you uh, share with our audience a little of the history of New Community as we celebrate our 50th year of uh, being in service. Give us a little history of how New Community started uh, and where we are now. It's impossible to give a little history now. I mean, to understand the history of New Community, you have to understand the history of Newark, basically sure. in terms of the racial and economic dynamics. Can't understand that without understanding the history of this whole country. Sure. The same issues. So since this isn't a mini-series, I'll try to keep it thumbnail. But um, essentially, uh, New Community Corporation began through the efforts of a group of people who had been working throughout the 50s and 60s. Um, around a church called Queen of Angels, which doesn't exist anymore. People have to remember the 60s, obviously were a time of great ferment. The civil rights movement was moving from the south to the north. Um, you had issues of, uh, of um, the Vietnam War, the counterculture, anti-war movement, beginnings of a women's rights thing. A lot of the progressive movements that we see today, sure. the last 50 years, really started in the 60s. Um, there was a group of people who worked around Queen of Angels Church, which was a very the epicenter of a lot of activism. People don't realize Queen of Angels was actually in the 30s was a kind of foreshadow what new community would do in terms of social services, oh. daycare, food pantries. But you had a group of people like Joe Chaneyfield, Willie Wright, Tim Still, Bob Kirvin, Alma Bateman, who worked at Queen of Angels and who were dealing with all these issues, civil rights, labor issues, uh, social services. Sure. Um, the, in 67, when the North Rebellion hit, and like many of us, I call it rebellion, not riot, because it, there was a political context to it that you really can't ignore. To just call it a riot kind of dismisses it as some sort of you know, violent but trivial act. Uh, and again, people need to remember 67 was the result of years of disinvestment from our city that sure. was racially targeted. But after the, the rebellion, those five days in July, there were two people had to figure out, what do we do now? Uh, it's almost like Dr. King's final book, Where Do We Go From Here? Um, so there were two directions people in Newark took. One was um, political. We had to transform the political system in our city to make sure that black people are represented. Sure. But black people went from about 30, 40% population of Newark in 1959 to almost 60, over 60% 60 by 1967. Wow. And yet, there was no representation. You had one black councilman who was a, really a part of the white establishment. Sure. Probably 85% of the police department was black. Sure. It, it was, 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 was white. Was white, yes. Yeah. Um, so there was no representation, no, no enfranchisement, and that's, that needed to be changed. So people said, we've got to get a black mayor elected with Ken Gibson being the candidate. On the other hand, to complement that, not, ex, not nothing, they were, they were complementary. Not, not siloed, yes. Right. People said, how do we change the community? How do we change the material conditions of our community? Um, so that it is better. Um, that's where the people who worked at Queen of Angels, like I said, the gentleman I said, a young priest named William Linder, who got to Queen of Angels back in 62, the pastor there, Thomas Carey, this is a very vibrant group. And in fact, to show that how important they were when Dr. King came to Newark a week before he was murdered in Memphis, he stayed at Queen of Angels Church. Wow. Um, he even designated uh, then Father Linder who's Monsignor Linda now, to be the treasurer for the Poor People's March. Wow. Which still occurred even after he was killed in Memphis. Um, so it was a very vibrant spot and place for activism in Newark. So um, when, when you talk of Monsignor Linder, yes. um, as part of that core group of, of mm -hmm. Newark residents and, and, and community leaders that were really engaged, what was Monsignor's role in, in, in addition to you know being a, a very key person? What was his role in developing and, and identifying what these key social issues were and are well, um, in, in, in the catchment area of New Community. From my, uh, well, from speaking with the people who were there, some of these, these men and women, uh, and there were women involved, sometimes we lose sight of the women who were involved both sure. in the Civil Rights Movement and, in, I mean, Alma Bateman was a founding board member of uh, New Community. But Father Linder played an important role in terms of bringing his experience, I mean, some of his engineering experience in terms of what New Community would become. And he had a key role in terms of contacts for funding. Um, so it was a very, from everything you, you would read, it was a very, it was a real teamwork kind of dynamic mm -hmm. that was involved. Um, there were also alliances with suburban churches, which was very important to New Community's origin in terms of resources, uh, whereby some of these suburban parishes raised money to contribute to what New Community was trying to accomplish. 
uh, and Father Linder was at the was at the core of a lot of this fundraising, reaching out to the government sector, uh, to private industry, that sort of thing. Sure. So, so what were the five key core policy or social service issues New Community was founded on and continues its work? Well, you know, at the time, um, maybe some of our viewers might not be old enough to remember, Queen of Angels was surrounded by three major public housing projects, Hayes Homes, uh, Stella Wright, and Scudder Homes thousands of public housing tenants who were served by Queen of Angels. So they basically did what would be called focus groups now. The key things were better housing and uh, daycare centers. Mm -hmm. Now, there was more than that, of course, because the key issues that New Community grew to encompass were housing, health care, education, employment, public safety. Uh, but those are th that's how it started with those two issues. And thus, uh, Babyland Family Services became the first project the New Community created. And then the housing, to show you the challenge with housing, the first housing wasn't built until 1975, even wow. though we were incorporated in 68. But it was just a matter, you know, assembling land, because the vision for a new community, um, and they did a lot of work on this. They went to national visits to other sites, was, was grand, it was big. So in order to accomplish and as assimilate the land that they needed, wh which is now in the community's footprint, they, it took some time. But they finally got it done, 75, the ball got rolling, and it hasn't stopped since in terms of the housing development, the physical development. Sure. So, and if you look at workforce development or uh, economic development, even back in the new communities' sort of original days, and again, fast forwarding, fast forward to where we are now, how important was economic or workforce development per se then and I guess even now? Oh, well, economics was at the core, really at the core of everything uh, because people needed uh, an economic foundation to, be, to empower themselves. Uh, th the whole thinking was that you know adequate income would lead to better housing, sure. better social services, better health care, that sort of thing. So that's always been at the core. Less crime. Uh, less, less crime. Uh, although it, I wouldn't put a causative relations there, but there is a corollary there sure. in terms of uh, crime and, and poverty. But that was, and, and the, the key thing here was also that um, New Community wanted to manage its own housing, which meant it was going to do all the own, its own hiring. A lot of these groups would farm out their management to outside agencies that way, but then they didn't know who they were hiring. So that's how New Community became an employer also. Correct. Economics was always at the core. And they even trained residents in the beginning. They required residents to go through almost a year's worth of training wow. before they were allowed to move into the housing as to exactly what the systems were in the housing, how the plumbing worked, how the wow. electricity worked, um, you know, their responsibilities sure. as tenants sure. and their rights as sure. residents. So it was a very, very organic and comprehensive approach that New Community took in the early days and still takes today. So as we come upon uh, New Community celebrating 50, 50 years of being in service, um, how have we been able to sustain ourselves organizationally for 50 years? Uh, well, that's the question for all these uh, nonprofit community-based organizations. And New Community is one of the larger what are called CDCs, Community Development Corporations. Although NORC is a little unusual in that we have a core group of them that have been around 40 plus years, 50 plus years. Uh, it's a variety of things. The housing generates money through the, um, the voucher system, the federal government subsidization, Section 8 housing. Um, in fact, all of our housing is rental Section 8 housing. 95% of our residents are not low income, they're extremely low income sure. in terms of federal formula. So that generates funding to keep our housing up. We have funding from private sources. We have fees that we charge for our program. So it's, sure. it's a mi like most groups, it's a mix of funding sources. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So actually, the, the new community is it's coming up, uh, as I reference our 50th anniversary. We're having a celebration on uh, Saturday, March 3rd at the Meadowlands Hilton uh, to honor my senior lender and uh, 50, 50 years of, of service and five decades of, of great work and service. Uh, tell us as we wrap up the, this segment, uh, Richard, a little about, again, you know, my senior's vision and as we all are now living out and carrying out my senior's vision uh, to provide services to those in need. What's that, the importance well, of that? Well, you know, it, going back to the beginning, the vision, uh, which again was, was created collaboratively among people across the community uh, with, with Monsignor Lindo, Father Linder then, along with all these other people I mentioned, was as simple and as complicated as to do one thing, and that was to create a new community, thus the name. That's not an easy thing. There are a lot of variables to it, a lot of things to approach, but that was it. And new community managed over the years to start rolling out housing and health care through the nursing home, through the, uh, the nursing programs, and 
workforce well, development, sure, uh, sure. economic stability through our credit union, sure. the workforce development program, um, youth programming, education through our early learning childhood. So we, it, we built one step upon another in terms of all the needs that really intersect. You know, when I mentioned, you know, housing, health care, employment, uh, education, all those things are connected. You can't talk about anything in Newark or any city without hitting onto one or more of those things. The new committee has managed to, through its programming, to touch them all. Correct. In fact, it also has become an, an economic engine because the new community employs people. Almost 600 people are employed wow. in the community with maybe 70% of them Newark residents, maybe 80% yeah. people of color. So all these things are, are critical to new, what it does and, and you know, who, it, who it is, its vision and its programming. Yeah, a and it's, it's wonderful that, that we're now sort of gatekeepers and stewards of, of Monsignor Linda's work. So we welcome those who are interested in attending our 50th anniversary gala to contact New Community Corporation at Eric 973-623-2800. We also welcome you to visit our website at www.newcommunity.org to learn more about our event that's coming up March 3rd at the Meadowlands Hilton. So we appreciate everyone's interest and time in learning more about New Community Workforce Development Center as well as New Community Corporation's history and its origin. And we welcome you to contact the agency to learn more about all of the great work we do. Thank you.